Let's turn it on now. Oh, good. Uh, good. Good morning, everybody. I, I apologize for being uh, just a, a little bit late. I was uh, busy giving directions to people to the rendezvous lounge. So I said, just come, come with me. So um, there should be a, a, a whole herd following in in just a second. Uh, it's nice to see everybody. If you are way at the back, the sound system in here, we're probably not going to reach you, so you might want to move a little bit forward. Uh, I think you're probably okay on this side because there's nobody in that back corner. But uh, welcome. It's great to be able to sit down in the morning time with a... Uh, with somebody who has such a great history and uh, a wonderful, uh, wonderful career path and great stories as well. So I want to get you to help me welcome back onto the stage right now the incredible Don Sherman. Did you do a good speech in there? Yeah. Are you all sure how to get off tomorrow? Yeah. Gangway. Always like that. Uh -huh. uh, four more meals and it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you cold or hot? Yeah. How, many, how many people are cold? Cool. How many people are hot? <laughs> how many people don't know how they feel? <laughs> I don't know, this, this ship, I, I, I got up this morning, I was freezing. When you walk from one end of the ship to the other, you go through four seasons. <laughs> I changed three times already, and it's all good. So I'm gonna take this off, because I'm very warm. This is, this is, our, I, uh, this is my favorite jacket, because it's the, uh, from my daughter's television show, a show called Gilmore Girl. Anybody seen that show? Yeah. Well, that's, she created that show, but I created the creator. <laughs> I don't get any residuals for it, but I did it. I had a good time doing it. Too. She's 40 years old, she's just 40 years old, but to me she'll always be 15 years old. God bless her, never when she went on her first date. I heard her telling my wife, don't worry about Joe, he's just like Dad. <laughs> I followed them wherever they went that night. <laughs> I'm married to a lovely, lovely lady. Uh, we just celebrated our 45th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really good example of Americana on marriage because I was born in the Bronx and I'm Jewish. She was born in Mississippi, and she's a Baptist. <laughs> we can work it out, anybody can work it out. But I found out a lot about Southern women, they make great wives, as long as they get their sleep. <laughs> All 23 hours of it. <laughs> I'll never forget, she was, this is 19, 1960, she was in a show called Gentlemen Before Blondes, and that, that I met her. We went together for about a year, and then we're getting serious, you know, Southern little ladies, very serious. And uh, she said, you gotta come down south and meet my, my parents. Well, panic be totally different. Going down my parents panic me. But I was gonna do it. We rent, I rented a car, driving down to her home, mom's home in Gulfport, Mississippi. Anybody been from Gulfport, Mississippi? No, they don't leave town too much, those people. <laughs> Never forget that. I was driving all night. I'm, I'm coming through a little town down south called Windsor, North Carolina. It's about 6 o'clock in the morning. There's a big, fat pig crossing the highway. Now, I was born in the Bronx, and to be honest with you, in the Bronx, you don't see that many pigs, you know? <laughs> I mean, two, three weeks go by, you don't see a pig. <laughs> so I don't want to hit the pig. You know, I'm Jewish, it don't count, but I figured, why hit a pig? <laughs> so to avoid hitting the pig, I make a sharp right before I go. My car skids, I'm off the road, I'm stuck in a ditch, I can't move. From out of the blue, police come. <laughs> 
there they hide behind trees. You're driving along and the whole forest pulls up alongside you. Out gets this policeman. Looks down at my New York license plates. Now he hates me from an old war. <laughs> he says, what you all doing parked here? I said, no, I'm not parked, sir. It was a big, fat pig crossing the highway. And I don't want to hit the pig. I, I don't see no pig. So I didn't invite him for lunch. He just was walking by, you know? <laughs> Ain't no wheels turning. Ain't no wind blowing. You parked. And it cost you $100 illegal parking. I said, no, you can't do this. I don't want to argue with my boy. You got a grievance? Let's go to the courthouse. So I said, still in America? Let's go to the courthouse. Takes me to the courthouse. A golf station. <laughs> a guy underneath the grease rack. That's the judge. He says, come on, Matt, we hold ourselves a trial. Takes off the coveralls, puts on the typical judge's outfit for Windsor, North Carolina. A hood. <laughs> Looks down and says, you ever been up before me? I said, I don't know what time you get up. So I paid the hundred dollars. But there's a moral. And that is if you're ever in Windsor, North Carolina, and you see a pig on the road. Hit him! <laughs> Took me. <laughs> it's too early in the morning to report. Never forget when I went to a family and heard to witness my first baptism. I've never seen a baptism before. That's when I learned a lot about Baptists. They all become great swimmers. <laughs> Because you have a long name and the reverend stutters, you don't come up. <laughs> Being Jewish, I shouldn't make fun of that. They did a weird thing to me when I was a kid that I still didn't do. <laughs> but what, what is amazing to me as I realize in my life, as I look back on my life, how much the South has influenced my life. I was born in the South Bronx. I married a Southern lady. When I got drafted in the army in Korea, I was fighting for the Southern Koreans. So I, I, I totally said, I never understood that war anyhow. I, I wanted like the Southern, I hated the North. I remember once I hated the Germans and the Japanese, I liked the Russians and the Chinese. Then I hated the Russians and the Chinese, and I liked the Germans and the Japanese. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I know I have to hate, but I don't know who. <laughs> I once got myself a map of the whole world, I could only find one place to hate. Windsor, North Carolina. <laughs> but I was really panicked when I was drafted into the, in the, in the army. You know? I had a friend of mine who said, that's the biggest break you're gonna get in your life. I said, are you crazy? It's freezing in Korea, they're fighting. He said, no, no, when they drafted me, I was just starting to play the trumpet. And when I got into the army, I told them I was a professional trumpet player. And they put me in a band. And I learned how to play better and better. By the time I got out of the army, I could work as a musician. And I always, and you always said you want to be a comedian. I said, yeah, I want it, but I've never been a comedian. But I knew a lot of jokes. I worked in the Catskills as a busboy and a waiter. And I memorized every, every comic joke. But I, just, I don't have the courage to do that. I, I, I discarded it. Now I'm going down south to Alabama. Everything in the south. Basic training. 300 guys from New York going down to Alabama. Pouring rain. Get out of the bus. And out comes this sergeant. Looks just like that cop in Windsor, North Carolina. You know? he says, I know you're from New York and New Jersey. And we're going to make your life miserable. You're going to wish you'd never been born. Pouring rain, guys screaming at me. Horrible first introduction. The next day, everybody has to go in to meet the commanding officer, the captain, one by one. I go in, the captain's there. 
Well, I didn't say right now, is it? Well, now you've been a soldier for 24 hours. How do you feel? I said, well, sir, there's a man out there. He hates me. I don't know who he is. I never met this guy before in my whole life. I don't think we're going to get along at all. So he looked up and he says, you a comedian? <laughs> he says, a matter of fact, that's all I ever did. I did stand-up comedy. And he said, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get a lot of guys here to tell us that story. We're going to have a show tonight at the office. You're going to do a show for us. Well, fear clutched my little heart. But I remember, you know, anybody here remember a comedian named Harvey Stone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Harvey? Oh, they just stood around. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Harvey became a star after World War II. When he got out of the army, he had a great routine about taking a physical. And everybody just loved his routine. And Sullivan used to use him a lot. He was a big hit. And I knew the routine word for word. It was a great routine. You know, you take a physical. The you know, the guys, the man comes in, says, take off all your clothes, you know, it's, it's embarrassing standing there naked, three uh, and guys, you know, you don't know what do with your hands, you know. <laughs> Think about funny things. I thought about history, you know. Abraham Lincoln said all men are created equal. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been a good president, but he never took a physical. You know? <laughs> and then the captain came and said, okay, gentlemen, sit down. Cold marble vents sound like a round of applause. You know? <laughs> then they took you into a room with bottles on the shelf, and the sergeant says, Fill it up. I said, What, from here? <laughs> I thought I was going to join the army, not the fire department. <laughs> so, after the show, I had no idea if I got a laugh. I didn't get a laugh. I was so petrified. He comes up to me, the captain says, Son, I want to apologize to you. Babe. We get a lot of phonies trying to sneak in. But I can tell a professional when I see one. I said, I said this is my business, you know. I get out of the army, but I really didn't have the courage yet to try to make it as a comedian. But I remember the job I always envied when I was a busboy and a waiter was the social director. Every hotel in the Catskill Mountains had a social director. And you used to introduce the shows on Saturday night, and you do Simon Says, and I used to teach the mambo. I can't even dance, and I was teaching the mambo. So I went around, I asked people in the mountains, do you know what is a job for something? Look, there's a guy in the Rosemont Hotel in Woodridge, New York. They need a social director. Oh, I got so excited, I got my car. I drove to the Rosemont Hotel. The hotel was up on a hill, and the bottom of the hill was a man drenched in dirt and sweat, working on a pipe. I said, excuse me, sir, do you know what I can find the owner? He says, I'm the owner. <laughs> the owner's not here. The owner's up in an office in an air condition. Well, come on, where's the owner? Looks up and he says, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> Yes, okay, $50 a week in your room. I said, oh, I got so excited. And my room was the room where, when the entertainers came on Saturday night, I had to get out of my room so they can change their clothes. So I used to sleep by the pool most of the time. But I loved it because in this hotel, they had all the old great comics, and I really missed them all. They had uh, Alan King and Myron Cohn, and there was one guy who was my big favorite, Jan Murray. I thought he was a marvelous guy. And he had one joke that first night that I worked, I saw him come out and said, boy, this is this joke. And Jan was the type of guy that he would put himself into a joke. He, you know, like he was really happy to him. He was telling his jokes. I was walking by a mental hospital one day, and there's a man out on the lawn with a big brush, and he's painting the lawn back and forth, back and forth. Well, I figured it's a mental hospital. God bless him, makes him happy, let him do it every night. Keeps painting the wall back and forth. I start to walk away, and the guy goes, Psst. Yes, I'm nothing wrong with me. It's a conspiracy. I have a million dollars hidden down the road in a box. They won't let me get to it. I'll tell you where it is. You go get it. Half for you, half for me. $500,000. I said, 
I love the door, so I... <laughs> So the guy said, okay, you walk down the road a mile, you see a white oak tree. You make a right turn, you go eight paces, you see a black rock. Pick up the black rock, dig two feet into the ground, you see a box. In that box, one million dollars. Half for you, half for me, and he keeps painting the lawn with this big brush back in for you. Well, I got very much to do, so walks down the road for a mile, there's the oak tree. Turns right six paces, there's the black rock, his heart starts beating. Picks up the rock, digs two feet into the ground, no box, six feet into the ground, no box, no body gets fed up, and goes into, goes back to the mental institution. There's this guy out on the lawn with his big brush still painting the way back and forth. <clears throat> says, why'd you do this to me? Why'd you send me on the wild goose chase like that? He says, did you go down the road a mile? He says, yes. Did you see the white oak tree? He says, yes. Did you see the black rock? He says, yes. Did you dig in the ground? He says, yes. Did you find the box? He says, no. Grab a brush. <laughs> Like Myron Cohn, Myron Cohn I used to love. He was such a gentleman. He had the greatest cruise joke in the whole world. Did, did you ever see Myron Cohn? Yes. Got the same haircut as Myron Cohn. He tells a story about this cruise ship, and all of a sudden it hits rough water, and a beautiful blonde girl is seen washed over by into the raging ocean, sure death. No more than five seconds later, a little Jewish man is seen diving overboard into the raging ocean, risking his life. They throw out the grappling hooks, the life preservers, and by the grace of God, they save him and they drag both these two people back on the ship, lay him out on the deck. The male man is exhausted. The captain comes over and he says, Sir, <coughs> sir, I've been sailing for 50 years. I have never seen such an act of heroism. Is there anything I can do for you? Is there any question I can answer? He says, Yes, I want to know only one thing. Who pushed me? Who pushed me? <laughs> Here's one guy I want to know. You ever hear a comedian named Georgie K? Now, anybody here know Georgie? He didn't quite make it because he was, he was a little ahead of his time. He was a really diminutive guy. He was about five feet tall, 4'11", really, but very natty dressed in the essence of confidence. And he used to love a routine. I have to stand up for this. He used to says, Ladies and gentlemen, the most important thing in life is a good memory. Good memory. First thing. I knew that. I enrolled in a, in a place called the Memory Institute on 48th Street and 2nd Avenue. And let me tell you, I took a course there. No, it's on 38th Street and 4th Avenue. <laughs> it's a tall black building. Look at the menu. Walk right now. It's a short white building. <laughs> There was a professor there named Professor Frank. Right? No, John, John, he's a short man with a dark beard, a tall man with a light beard. No, he's not a beard at all. <laughs> they, they really didn't understand. Remember Erwin Corey? Oh, sure. Yeah. Professor. Yeah. Professor. Yeah. Professor. Yeah. Did you know he was a man for them? He's a professor. He's totally crazy. Scientists tell us there were two basic ages sex. And I forget the other. <laughs> he's still working, 90 years old. God bless him, he's phenomenal. He Joe Frisco, anybody remember Joe Frisco? Gambling addict, had the greatest job. He said he told all these classic stories. He said, I was going on the track one day and I see this old man sitting out front, depressed, dejected, on the curb. Such sadness came over me, I felt so sorry for this old man. I reached my hand in my pocket, I took two dollars, I said, here, chin up. Went into the trap, came out three hours later, the same old man was there, jumped up in front of me with a fistful of ten dollar bills, he said, here, I said, what's this for? He said, chin up, came in and paid eleven to one. <laughs> <laughs> Alan King, he couldn't do those things, they used to rip his wife, uh, she was a light eater, when it gets light, she starts to eat. <laughs> Told me she was 19, later I found out it was the size of a shoe. <laughs> but I love her, that's why I'm gonna leave this show. I got right back home to Brooklyn. I don't know why, because I don't live there. <laughs> Henny Youngman! 
man goes to a doctor, says, doctor, 90 years old, I'm in love with a girl, 16. He says, man, 90, a girl, 16, he says, sir, that can prove to be fatal. It's fatal, she dies, she dies. <laughs> Madness to the science. I don't know about science. I don't know about science. They banned cyclamates and said it's against the law because it gives cancer to rats. Do you know how hard it is for a rat to open a fresco? <laughs> <laughs> tell your doctor. Tell you, you tell your doctor. You have to tell to tell your doctor. If I have to tell my doctor about a drug, I get another doctor. <laughs> Those drugs panic me anyway. And they had Avatar, you see the commercial for Avatar? It's embarrassing. It's, it's, it's the guy is always going to the bathroom. Poor soul. He's going on airplanes, he's missing ball games, he's running out the sailor. And every time he goes to the bathroom, everybody stares at him like he's a leper, you know? He had no right to go, go to the bathroom. And they say, you take this drug and you don't go to the bathroom, but your breast might swell. <laughs> So if you go to the bathroom, you go to the ladies' room from that time. You know? <laughs> I bought a portable air conditioner once. It didn't work. I brought, I brought it back, and I said to the salesman, "This is defective." He says, "Really? Where's the box?" I said, "The box is fine. It's the air conditioner that don't work." He <laughs> said, "Okay, okay. I was just kidding. I'll, he gave me a brand new one. I take it home. I install it. It's working great. It's nice and cool." Two o'clock in the morning, get up, swollen glands from the cold air. Can't breathe. New York, go to Roosevelt Hospital emergency room. After 12 o'clock, they have a deal with the doctors. They pay is cheap, but they can make mistakes. <laughs> so I go in there, I can't breathe. I say, can I see a doctor? A didn't turn? <clears throat> a volunteer nurse? <clears throat> Finally, the intern comes out. He's about 14 years old. <laughs> Looks up at me and says, uh, with his right finger, whack on the right side, whack on the left side. He says, you have swollen glands. He says, do you have an air conditioner? I said, yes. Did you save the box? <laughs> Hi, are you still here? Oh, I thought you had another child for crying out loud. I was just having a nap over here. <laughs> I ain't got laser. Good. Where did you get all that hair? Why should you have all that hair? And I hold it for me. Hold it. I, I, do you appreciate how much hair you've got hanging on your head there? Yeah, you've always had hair. What's going to happen if suddenly you wake up bald? You don't care, right? You're cute. What's your name, sir? Huh? Dylan. How old are you, Dylan? 14. You having a good time? Where's the girl? The, there's no 26-year-old girls here for you for quite a while. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks for stopping the talk. Okay. Computers! Computers. I don't know. They're not for older people. Computers. If you're over 30, don't dare the computer. They've been there all life. I bought a computer because they force you to buy it. They advertise it. I've got a computer. And I'm typing a script and I want to change part of the script and I press delete. Oh. <laughs> not, not really, something else happens. comes on the, on the screen comes, are you sure? <laughs> I'm having an argument with a little Japanese guy. <laughs> cell phones, by God, I gotta, I'm so sorry, I got a cell phone. The devil gets in your life when you buy a cell phone. I didn't want it because I have nobody to talk to. <laughs> but they get me crazy, so I buy this instrument, and now it dominates my life. I don't care what's going on. I don't care if I don't have my keys. I don't care if I can't find my wallet. As long as I got my cell phone, the world is okay, right? <laughs> and God forbid I shouldn't have my cell phone. My life is not complete. So I, I'm so frustrated looking for it. I lost it. Oh, where is it? I, I lost it five times on the ship already. And the honest to goodness truth, one time I couldn't find I'm going crazy. The steward made the bed with the cell phone in it. <laughs> so I figured to alleviate my frustration, I'll get a method. I will always put my cell phone 
in my left pocket. <laughs> so all day long I'm going, <laughs> and if I feel that piece of steel, my life is complete, right? <laughs> this is the honest to goodness truth. I am on my cell phone, and I'm talking to somebody, and I pat my pocket. <laughs> And I yell, oh my god, I lost my cell phone! <laughs> and the guy says, you're talking to me on your cell phone, you moron! <laughs> oh, one joke, I, 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 I myself wrote a joke that uh, for Earl Wilson, remember Earl Wilson used to use it every summer? I wrote a joke, it was so hot in New York today that I walked by Grant's tomb and the door was open. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have any questions, but I can go on like this for maybe another minute. <laughs> Where are you guys? Where are you? Look at these two guys. Ten. Why don't you lay back and relax? So look how relaxed they are. <laughs> can I take your pulse for a minute here? <laughs> What's your name? Fergus. Fergus! Jewish guy, huh? <laughs> Oh, did you have the accent? I had the accent for probably all the And does anybody else understand you but your mother? <laughs> I have my accent, the accent. I have my accent for a is, is that close? No. 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 You, you don't understand me and I understand you. That's why I get along so well. I, are, you, I, are you Scotch too? No. What are you? Uh, Canadian. Canadian? And you, you hang around with the Scotch guy? Always in the cheap seats. You know? <laughs> There's a happy couple. Hi. Oh, tattoo, tattoo. I love tattoos. You cannot be buried in a Jewish cemetery, right? There's only way you can do it. They stick your hand out of the grave. <laughs> wow, that's great. Well, well, what's your name? Clem. Clem. Where are you from, Clem? Northern Ireland. Is there any Americans in this show? <laughs> and this is Mrs. Clem? Yeah. What's your name? Ina. 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 Did you have a good time? Very much, yeah. You have to fly home after this? Yes, oh, you poor thing. thing. <laughs> I don't believe those airplanes. Stay. It's absolutely nuts. Oh, is you cute? Where are you from? Dallas, Texas. Hot damn, Dallas, Texas! <laughs> I worked at the Adolphus Hotel in Dallas, Texas. I met Jack Ruby in Dallas, Texas. <laughs> I thought he was a nice, harmless little guy, you know? He must have gone in his pocket through me a little bit, but... How about candy bar? Did you eat candy bar? I did, but I won't say it in front of my wife. <laughs> you all... Did they, did she ever get out of jail? That was a crime. She has passed away. Uh, but did, did, did she get... Did get out of jail. That was terrible. These are the Andrew sisters, folks, in case you want to know. How about you, Washington, D.C. Oh, I'll stay away from you. Where are you from? Catskill Mountains. Catskill Mountains, where? Swan Lake. Swan Lake, the common doing all I Oh, God, you still in there? You know, people don't recognize how beautiful the Catskills are. They just think about hotels. It's gorgeous, good country. I work for him. He still hasn't paid me the check. You know that? <laughs> ah, look, is this a happy couple? How long are you married? 60 years. 60 years? <laughs> I asked you this, uh, this to stand up, but I don't think you can make it. <laughs> 60 years. How long you made your name? Oh, my first girlfriend was Marilyn. <laughs> You're not from the Bronx, are you, Marilyn? <laughs> 60 years. Did anybody get them beat? You're the king. How do you like that? <laughs> There's a guy. What happened to the arm? Food? <laughs> you wanted that extra piece of chicken, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Wow. Is that anything serious or just didn't have a gear, did you? No. I broke the, I broke the wrist. Oh, that hurts, my God. You gotta keep me in there. Those cash registers. You gotta do the face. What's your name? Hank. Hank. Stand up, Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
when he came here, he was 32 pounds. Yeah. I remember, I remember when he came on. Monday was down here. You know, I saw that Monday. Hey, you know, we got the same barber me and you. What's your name, sir? Bud. Huh? Bud. Bud, have a bud. Yeah. What's up, bud? Uh, San Marcos, California. Oh, it's so beautiful. I went to the Circle Theater, the Circle mm -hmm. Star Theater in San Marcos. Isn't that there? No. Isn't that up near San Francisco? No, no, no. I wonder nobody showed up. <laughs> no, oh, but isn't there another city? Uh, uh, San Marcos, up north? San Carlos. San Carlos, that's what it was. <laughs> I worked with Jose Feliciano. <laughs> Come on, baby, let my fire. Now, I know you look at these two people, and you know they have a solid education. For some reason or other, he looks like a computer genius, and she looks like she explained it to him. <laughs> I want to see if I'm good. <laughs> what you, what's your name, sir? I'm Jim. Jim, what do you do for a living? I'm retired. That's a tough job, isn't it, Jim? <laughs> she, she, she helped you retire? I'm retired. No, well, what did you do before you retired? Business for you. you don't want to talk too fizz. I mean, okay. <laughs> Keep it quiet, you're retired, go. you've got the hair, but what are you worried about? Yeah. And this is Mrs. Jim, what's your name? Juanita. Juanita. I'm Espanol. <laughs> what did that mean, Juanita? <laughs> How'd you get a name like Juanita? Juanita. Juanita! See, this is the better read. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, the best seats in the house, sir. Back of the show. What's your, what's your name, sir? Hi, Bob. This is Carol? Sandy. Remember Bob, Carol, Ted, and Alice? Weren't you Bob and Alice? No. <laughs> Sandy and Juanita. Bob. I forgot your name because I don't trust you. You've got too much hair. Me, <laughs> hey, here. Anybody have any questions you'd like to ask me? Nobody. I'm not curious about anything. I originally born in the South Bronx, then I moved. Uh, huh? Manor Avenue. And, and, and then I... Huh? Right. And then I moved to East Bronx, Allison Avenue, Pound Parkway. We got the three people parking underneath the sewer. Don't laugh though, people living under us. And under them was China. Oh, rich girl. Walton High School. Did you go to the dances on Friday night? I've been looking for you for a long time, you know that? I respect a woman that can do a crossword puzzle. I can never, oh, well you did about three lines here for crying out. You skipped all the beginning, right? You, you keep going till you find one you can work. You got at, to, the, and till. Huh? Oh my God. Concord, crossing is. Uh, Fallsview, Neville, Commodore, Homeward. Wally, Stevensville, Cutches, uh, Swan Lake Hotel, Greenfield Park. Where's the hotel in Greenfield Park? Yeah. Hiya! Hi. We've been waiting for you! <laughs> Where you been? I told you to be here 10 o'clock! <laughs> what? You yeah. just walked in! I can't hear you. I just got up. You just got up? I'm going to stay in your room. We'll shove it down your mouth. Eh? <laughs> Listen, she's running away. What are you running with? Stay with your friend. She's going to get up. You came with her, you have to stay with her. Remember, girls would never break up. God, the guys would leave a friend in a minute. But a girl. If you liked her friend and she had nobody else, they would not separate. But a guy, the hell with you, I got this girl. How you doing, sir? I talked to you already. Right? <laughs> Afraid somebody's gonna take something out of that bed? <laughs> Texas people don't fool around, man. They guard everything. Hi, sir. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Right. Where are you going? Hey, where are you going? <laughs> no, where are you going? There's nothing's open over there. <laughs> Just want to go to the door and smell? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. 
the Mercury Walk. <laughs> We had a good time. It's a great ship. I love it. And the crew, my God, they're magnificent. They, they don't leave you alone. Enjoy your soup. Enjoy your spoon. Enjoy your fork. Enjoy your this. I'm overjoyed with somebody. But there are some mysteries. Tell me. Why is it when you sit down at the dining room table, there's 160 pieces of silver? You say one word, everything disappears but one fork. Are you sharing with another cruise line you're sitting there? <laughs> is there any other well, Craig, is there any other questions in here? Because the lunch is still a long time away. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> oh yes, I'm sorry, sir. Could you interview our cruise director? Should I interview the cruise director? Yeah. Sure. Where is he? <laughs> oh, you are a cruise director. See, I've got you know about you. Isn't that something? <laughs> How did you get started in this business? <laughs> well, that's enough, let's go with it. <laughs> Look, he says a charm, this guy. Did you intend to be a cruise director uh, or just you drifted into it? There's no, no school for this. I was uh, walking past the waterfront one day and someone hit me on the head and I woke up. <laughs> so, oh, that's a person personality yeah, then, huh? Exactly. Why? Where'd you get that energy? You have a fantastic sense of energy. I don't know. You're going to eat that microphone and talk into it. Well, I don't know if this would work, so I haven't tested it yet. <laughs> it's the first time I've talked in it. It's a game, don't you? Oh, all give them a hug over here. The poor guy isn't talking enough all week. I was trying to say something about 45 minutes ago. <laughs> it doesn't matter Actually, anymore. I have to know. He's a, he was a drama student, he was a director, he's an actor, he's a singer, and he's a, a dancer. And that's how he got this job, yeah, because they wanted to make sure he doesn't act, sing, or dance. <laughs> Anywhere else in the world. He's a Canadian? Yeah. You, 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 uh, did you know that this ship was supposed to leave from Seattle? And they're not going to be leaving from Seattle any this summer, they've gone from Vancouver. <laughs> Look how excited they are, they'll come running that down. <laughs> so, tell us, uh -oh. where, where did you study your drama? In Canada? Yes. And uh, why? Well, because no one else would give me a job, Don. <laughs> why? You're a good looking guy, you're a charming personality. I, I, well, I studied theater uh, uh, so that I, I could have a career as a waiter. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you, then, you know what he told me, which is fascinating? He <laughs> loves this job. Why don't you interview me? <laughs> no. I thought that's what we were going to do in the first place. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Oh my God, I knew it was something like that. <laughs> Hi, sir. Take your time. We don't get into tomorrow morning. <laughs> You're supposed to walk him back to him, you know. That's the Oriental style. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> now we'll go down and walk by this way. You see, come down this way. Remember Tim Conway? Guys, it was so funny. Go, what were we saying? Sorry, I just. I wasn't saying anything. Oh, you weren't saying anything, so. Somebody has to say something. Like Except, well, yeah. Go ahead. But he's a tap. Would you tap dance for before? You know, tap no, dance? I don't tap dance. Yes, yeah, so I see tap dancing backstage all the time. <laughs> <laughs> You always do before you go on. He does a great time step. I don't do a time step. That's the one thing I couldn't learn. Really? No. I, I just, don't you know leave. What? We're interviewing Stuart. <laughs> See, they're walking out on us. <laughs> it happens to me Where are you going, girls? Where are you going? We're here to the room? <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> Louise, uh, I can't object to going to the room. Uh, to going to my room, I object. But uh, is there any other questions? Oh, Stuart, Dr. Stewart, I forgot. You will give us some information. What? What information? How many children do you have? I've got none. I work oh, at sea. Oh, but you have a big family. You have a, the brothers and sisters. Uh, yeah. Well, how many? Six. Six. 